All right, here we have another H-bridge uh, circuit, this time using MOSFETs instead of bipolar transistors. Again, I got two switches here, forward and reverse, an Arduino Nano. Here's the four connections from uh, digital pin 8 through 12. These are just driver transistors for the 2P channel MOSFETs up here to keep the voltage off the Arduino. And these are two in-channel MOSFETs. Here we have, again, my current limiting circuit. This is what you need to do when you assemble these things, is to use a current limited power supply until you're sure the circuit's working properly. And of course, here again, we have two LEDs back-to-back -back that are polarity indicators. All right, let's cut the device on. You should see the motor going one direction or the other. That's showing that I'm drawing current through the system. You notice one of the LEDs on, are on. Notice the direction of the motor. Let's press the other switch. You notice the other LED switches on when it changes polarity and the motor's rotation reverses. Also note that this thing is timed in such a way it turns everything off before it reverses polarity. This is to give the motor a chance to settle down and the transistors to fully switch off and so forth. Hit the reset. Stop the motor. Since it's obvious that the device is working, I'm going to bypass the current limiting device. Now when you cut it on, you will see it take off at full speed. And again, you notice there's a delay long enough where the motor pretty well stops of about a half a second. It also gives me time to release the key. Hit the reset the whole system turns off. Alright, I'll just give you a quick review of the uh, safety devices and the indicators, but the rest of it is pretty much the same as other schematics on the website. So, let's look at the safety devices and thank for thanks for watching. Here are two parts to this H-Bridge project that are indispensable and I highly urge you to use them. Use a current limited power supply. That way if you wire up something wrong, the programming is wrong and you switch on the wrong pairs of transistors or whatever, you won't blow up the power supply, you won't knock out your transistors and that goes for MOSFETs or bipolar trans, whatever you're using use um, I, I used a current limited LM317 with a 2.7 ohm resistor this will give me a max current output of 460 milliamps as you saw in the video I actually had a 12 volt light bulb since it's a 12 volt system in this case wired from the in to the out that gave me a visual indicator if the circuit is shorted the LM317 will maintain the current at around 460 mils, but the voltage will be dropped across the regulator. The light bulb lighting up across the regulator tells me, hey, it's dropping a lot of voltage. I have a problem. Something is not working here. In addition, before you hook up a motor, when you're going through the programming and wiring and everything and, and this and I and I can tell you this is happening with people because I've done it in the past I'm guilty okay you wire it up you put your motor on you hit the power supply and boom there goes your transistors your power supply just blew a fuse blah blah that's the story before you hook up a motor connect this instead leave the motor off until you know you got the wiring correct until you have the programming correct 
just put a couple of back-to-back -back LEDs through a 1K resistor across a B here. When it's working right, you should switch on one LED cleanly and it should switch off and then the other, other LED should switch in cleanly. This way you can make sure that you're not having a miswired circuit trying to drive a motor dragging a lot of current through the system. So these two safety features do what you want. I would highly advise you to use a current limited power supply and use this before you hook a motor on and make sure that it's swapping polarity like it should. All right, here's the exact schematic of the H bridge you saw in the video. Up here at Q1 and Q3, we have P channel MOSFETs. Q2 and Q4 are N channel MOSFETs. You notice the pin connections to Arduino. Digital pin 8, 9, 10 and 11. Assuming you use the um, program below, you have to wire it up exactly like that. Don't move the pin numbers around. Don't modify the circuit or try to cut corners. Um, how this works, you're going to turn you have to you have to turn on digital pin 8. And digital pin 11 at the same time and that creates a path through Q4 and Q1 or you have to cut on digital pin 9 and digital pin 10 creating a path through Q2 through Q3 never ever ever cut on Q3 and Q4 at the same time if you're using the uh, current limiting circuit you won't blow anything up but if you're not using it and you do that that's that's all she wrote same thing here never cut on q1 and q2 at the same time and when you're switching polarity give it some time to settle down turn everything off all digital pins 8 through 11 are turned off zero volts give things time to settle down before you swap um, polarity to change the motor direction and that's all there is to it it's a fairly simple circuit it's a variation of what I've posted for the last couple of years you saw it working it works well there was a report that some of these transistor uh, Q1 and Q3 got hotter than Q2 and Q4 that's to be expected because these particular IRF 9630s has a higher turn on resistance than the 630s that are Q2 and Q4. If you're going to be driving some really heavy motors, heat sink all of the transistors. All right. Good luck. And visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. As a final quick note, this transistor here and here, the two that weren't marked with a Q, are general purpose NPN transistors. In the case of this, I use some TIP41s. Again, TIP41, you don't need a transistor that heavy. A 2N2222 will work just as well. Have fun.